the 18th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome back to our returning viewers and welcome to those who are viewing us for the first time. Today's adventure takes us all the way to Scotland and Ireland. Now we will have to do this podcast in a four part series so make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of the parts. Uh, we visited so many places this summer. It was amazing. Yes, and too many that we couldn't put them all in one, oh, one podcast. Today we will be talking about Salkilts, Oban, and the Isle of Arran. Isle of Arran is just off the west coast of Scotland. And before we get started, Colleen will talk about what we are wearing. As you know, um, we have started dyeing yarn. And last episode, May was wearing um, a cowl that I had made for her. And this time she's wearing the cowl that I made for me. <laughs> it looks great on her. Um, I'm looking forward to it when it's a little cooler. The yarn is Alpaca Merino Fine. It's by Estelle. It's got 55% wool, 25% nylon, and 20% alpaca. And we used uh, food coloring when we did the dyeing. And the uh, pattern is the Lace Cowl by Wendy Deus. Now you and have this folded over a little bit because yes. it is a bit longer in that yeah. pattern. Yes. But it turned out quite well. Like it turned out so uh, that you can. I like for ways. you. I, you don't like things up around your right. neck, so I really like it. And the blocking made all the difference in this. When you're knitting it, it kind of gets all curled up, but the blocking made all the difference. So it's actually about this big. So I had enough yarn in one skein to make you your cowl, to make me that cowl, and it's exciting because it's yarn that we dyed together. So I'm really thrilled about that. Yeah, and you know what? We, when we dyed that I can't believe how it turned out for our first dying yeah, experience. I can't believe it, it, it's so cool to take something you know blank and then have it turn out like this. So that was that's what May's wearing and I'm wearing this necklace and just so that you know we do all kinds of things and all I had to do was I went to Michael's they were having some of their um, jewelry things on sale and I bought two chains that were the same and I took out a link and joined it together and I really like it. It's nice and light. Yes. And the way that it worked out, and I'm not sure you'll be able to see this on camera, so I'm going to try and hold it up. I have these two little links left. And so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to try and make myself a pair of earrings that match. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. So I'm really excited about this. Sometimes when it's hot outside, um, I can't handle stuff around my neck that way. So this is nice and light and it's um, something else that I made. That's what we're wearing, and next we're going to talk about our finished objects. My first finished object is a wee sweater. And I've started saying wee instead of little. <laughs> I think it has to do something with being in Scotland. <laughs> so this pattern is um, Bambino. So it's cardigans in Bambino DK. I'm using a different yarn, but I loved making this. Now this is tiny. It's wee. Um, I'm going to have you hold it up. Okay. So I love the pattern. There's just a couple of buttons there and then it's just a flap. So it's going to be nice. It's going to be easy to put on a, a baby and it's going to be um, nice to take care of. So the yarn that I used is Cherub DK. It's 55% nylon and 45% acrylic. It it's feels so soft. soft and it did block. I did a steam block so it opened it up a little bit. It's hard to believe babies Looks are that pretty. tiny, <laughs> yeah. but it is beautiful, and I, really, is. I love the color. It's purple. <laughs> so, well, it's the color of Heather, and uh, we saw a lot of Heather when we were in Scotland, Absolutely. so that is beautiful. So that's Great my job. first finished object. Now, the second finished object is something that you saw last episode. I used Bernat Softy Baby. It's 100% acrylic, so with little ones, you want to have um, easy wash um, yarn. And the pattern for the hat was Beloved. Um, by Tin Can Knits, and it is a brilliant pattern. I absolutely loved it. It is so cute. Um, it's easy to do the way that the pattern set up, and it's so cute. And I think it's going to be great because with the tie, it's going to be easy to hold on to the baby. Now, while you're holding that up, I'm going to hold you what it goes with. So this is by Oga Knitwear Designs, and this is called the Norwegian Fur Cardigan top-down cardigan. Now, can I just say, you didn't do any sewing with this. From what I understand, you start at one end and you go right All down All the way the to other the other. End. Absolutely. So that was kind of cool. And so here is the, once again, wee jacket that it goes with. If you can hold the hat yeah. up, I'll hold oh, the hat up with it. So there what's go. nice about is this garter detail and this is a garter sweater. So I really like it. So we are going to tuck this away and then when somebody that we know has a wee baby, then we're going to have the things for the little there. one. 
So we decided that that's what I'm going to do because you just never know when all of a sudden somebody says, oh, I'm going to have a grandchild in the next couple of months. You think, oh my goodness, I'll have something ready. It's a good idea. It is a good idea. And the last one is another one of those things. And that is made out of Red Heart Soft. It's called Light Gray Heather is the main color. I love the color of this. Yeah, and the pattern <coughs> Excuse me. is Blossy by Sarah Dern. Now, if you take a look at that, and if you take a look at this, you will see that the pattern's not the same. Oh. So what I did was I used the stitch count from Blossy, and then I decided I didn't want to have quite so many colors, and so I just used two colors, and I shortened the amount that's there, because sometimes with the wee one, it's just too much. So I did some designing, by the way, I'm loving designing, and hopefully maybe I'll be able to oh, design something. Oh, you did a great something. job with that. Yeah, so I'm really thrilled. Once again, I steam blocked it, and I'm really, really happy with it. And once again, we're going to tuck it away, and then when somebody we know has a baby or a grandbaby, then we're going to be good. And it's very soft also. It is. That Red Heart Soft is exactly what it describes. Oh, So perfect. I am thrilled with great that. Great job. Somebody will enjoy that. It'll be warm this winter. Absolutely. So we're going to have to get a special basket just for things that we're going to hold on to and wait for little babies to be born. So those are my finished objects and now we're going to talk about May's finished objects. I just have a couple. My painting, you've probably seen my painting before. I did a larger uh, one of this and somebody had requested a smaller one for themselves so I painted a smaller one and so that's one of the finished objects and also uh, while in one of our stores and I don't even remember we've been to so many of our stores <laughs> yes, we have. but I saw this little uh, keychain that was a sheep and I thought you know what I could make one of those and it wasn't really it was quite expensive actually yeah. and so I thought you know I could probably make one of those so came home got my scroll saw out cut out some wood uh, spray paint and some yarn and Colleen picked up the yarn and I got some yeah. things to make a keychain and, and it uh, is so cute. that is my keychain as a finished object. It is beautiful. You did such a great job on that. And you know what? I might even put a video out there as to how to make one of these if you wanted to interest in making one at home. That would be great. Yes. Yeah. Comment right. below. Let her know if that's what you'd like to see and we'll put something in place for you. Okay. Now I have one other finished object that I'd like to show you. While we're in Scotland, um, I would like to have gotten some souvenirs. Mm -hmm. And this little creek, which you'll see some pictures later on, um, I wanted to collect some rocks and maybe come home and make a, um, what would you call that? Like a little... Uh, Almost like a little statue kind of thing. Yeah, a little statue. And then it's kind of my little souvenir. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, what happened was, there's, a, there's always a story. <laughs> what happened was I came home and I used the hot glue gun to glue the rocks together. And it wasn't really working and they were falling off. So I have never used Gorilla Glue before. Yes, gorilla and I glue. suggested Gorilla Glue to you. So Colleen had said, Gorilla Glue will, will do that. So I, no problem. Got the Gorilla Glue, poured it on, it's going <laughs> to stick. Well, uh, as this was sitting here, it was foaming. And <laughs> all kinds of weird things were happening with that. I guess I used too much. I didn't read the instructions on the Gorilla Glue. And so um, it's not exactly what I had planned because I had to scrape off all the foaming material. Um, it's not exactly what I had planned. It might be a souvenir fail, I would call this one. <laughs> but, you know, nonetheless, I can't get rid of the rocks because they did come out of a, a creek that was in Scotland. Yes, but exactly. Anyway, that's my story. So be careful when you're using Gorilla Glue. <laughs> and that's my finished objects. Great. Next, we're going to talk about our works in progress. My first work in progress is a wee hat to go with the wee sweater. <laughs> so it is purple um, and the pattern is called the basic baby hat by Heather Tucker. I think I need to get some new ink in my printer but that's okay. So oh, it's very anyway, soft. It is very soft and I'm really thrilled with it. What I like about this pattern is it ends up it's not just a steady decrease it ends up with actually four places where decreases happen. So I think it's going to go really, really nice with that little sweater. And then once again, we'll tuck it away. Yeah. And then when somebody has a baby, we'll have a gift right away. Wonderful. All right. And once again, Cherub DK, which is 55% nylon, 45% acrylic. Now, how long would it take you to do a hat like that? Um, not too, too long. Um, part of the issue is to try and find the pattern. 
And I know sometimes it's, Ravelry is great, um, but sometimes there's so many patterns to try and figure out. So I, well, I've done this pat before and I really liked it. It's like having too many choices, I think. I find yep. that when there's too many yeah. choices of anything, it's yeah. difficult. So lots of times what I'll do is I'll go into one of the Ravelry groups that I'm in and say, okay, what are people doing? Um, I know some people have made bundles. So for instance, the Grocery Girls, they have a bundle of one skein uh, shawls. And so I go in there and then it limits that I only have to look for that many. All so, right, sounds yeah. like you have this down. <laughs> I'm working <laughs> at it, I'm getting it figured out. Sometimes I get inspiration from Meredith, who is my niece in Calgary. You will have seen her in some episodes before. Um, she was doing a shawl and it is called the Stormy Sky Shawl. And it is by Life is Cozy. And now I'm not using such a big needle. And as a result, um, it's not gonna be quite as huge as that is. This will definitely block out, um, but I am thrilled with wow, it. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. I love it. Exactly. And Meredith sent you this? Person. Yes, she wow. was working on one and I said, well, I'm going to give it a try as well. So I am thrilled with that. Nice choice, Meredith, if you're watching. Exactly. And the yarn is yarn that we dyed. That so makes it even better. It does make it even better. <laughs> I had a skein. Of, once again, it was the alpaca merino fine. And we did some work with it. Love we did something colors. called dip Look dyeing. It is brilliant. Oh. So it will definitely, when I block it, it will open it up. And the other thing that I like about the pattern, if you hold that up for me, that at the ends, they put tassels on. So they're just going to be a tassel on each end, just to finish off the end that's just going to be sitting around after that. And I'm thrilled to give that a try. Wonderful. Yeah. So thank you, Meredith. That was a great inspiration for me. The other place I get inspirations is from when I watch uh, podcasts. And I was watching the Bakery Bears. And K.F. Jones was talking about toe-up socks and having trouble figuring them out. And I was right in agreement with her. She was test knitting a pattern by uh, Jules Hill of So Sweet Violet. And it is a toe-up sock. And I thought, okay, if K.F. Jones can do it, I'm going to give it a try. And it is a lovely pattern. So it is called the Sweet Bee Socks. Is it a free pattern or a paid for? No, this is a paid for pattern, but it is worth every penny. Uh, Jules has two parts in it that I really like. One is called a beanie toe. So it's a different way of starting a toe up sock. And then the heel she calls a godet heel. I think I'm saying that right. Um, now the pattern itself is designed for two colors. There's a little bit of lace work in it. Uh, but I had some self-striping yarn that I wanted to try. And I thought, toe-up socks I can do. Um, and so that's what I did. So I've not put the lace in, but I've taken the construction of this pattern and I've done it. So I've used two colors. So once again, what a surprise. There's some the purple. purple. <laughs> um, that is Diamond Luxury Footloose Sock. So that is for the toe. And for the rest of it, I'm using a Mirasol couscous. Not couscous, couscous. <laughs> it's not food. Anyway, <laughs> and it has wool, 40% wool, 40% bamboo, and 20% nylon. So let's talk about this construction. So the toe, there's the beanie toe. Now, this looks like there's a little bit of like a toe in there, but it's just the end of the yarn. So that's it. Then I, so that was the toe. Then you work towards this, and this is that godet heel. I love it. I really like what's happened, how the striping comes up as you start to go back up the leg. Now, some of you I know will not handle when the stripes break. And I knew that when I started it, and I was okay with that. And then it comes up to the top, and then it is this twisted rib, and I love it. Because there's give to it, but it's gonna snug it in. And I'm really, really thrilled. That is beautiful. Yeah, the yarn is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I've had it for a long time. So what I'm trying to do right now is yarn that I have already caked up. So this is when it's in a cake. Yarn that I've caked up, I'm going to try and use up. And before I start winding, because it does stretch it a little bit when you put it in a cake and you're not supposed to leave mm -hmm. it in a cake. Some right. people say that. That's what they say. Exactly. Now, I just want to talk about okay. these needles because, oh my goodness, I seem to love everything. But these <laughs> needles are chow goo. It's nice that you're so positive. Yeah. They're uh, Chow Goo 
They're fixed circulars. They are 32 inch, um, 2.25. Um, so they're the red lace. I got these when we were in Holland, Michigan. Oh my goodness. I've heard people talk about chow gu needles and I thought, okay, yeah, I'll give them a try sometime. And then I thought when I found these ones, because you can't always get the fixed circulars, um, I thought I'd give it a try. And it glides and the join is beautiful and I kind of understand why people are really, really talking highly about them. Um, I'm not sure I would take them on a plane because I wouldn't want somebody to take them away from me. Um, but I really am thrilled with the whole project. I can hardly wait to get the second one on. Great, they look good. Those are my works in progress. Next, we're going to talk about our adventure. Our first stop takes us to Salkut's uh, Ayrshire in Scotland, which is the place that I was born. Which was I was so excited to see it. Mace talked about it for years and I was just thrilled to be able to see where she was born. And it's a little community really on the west coast. Mm. Uh, it was great. The weather was amazing, wasn't it? Like yep, the weather had told me it was going to pour for two weeks, it was going to be raining. So we were very prepared for rain. We had <laughs> waterproof shoes, waterproof coat, waterproof backpacks, uh, umbrellas, raincoats. You name it, we, we were prepared. <laughs> now every day was about 25, 26 degrees, no humidity, so the weather was absolutely phenomenal. We were great. able to walk everywhere, mm -hmm. walk on the, and then just appreciate the scenery and, yeah, and all beautiful. that. So Salkos yeah. was a very lovely place. We stayed there with my mom's uh, cousin George and Ellen, who were amazing hosts and hostesses. Oh, they so, treated us very nicely, it was great. Yeah, thank you Ellen and George. Thank and you. <laughs> the cool thing for Colleen is Ellen is a knitter, so they had uh, they had a little bit in common to, to talk about that kind of stuff. And Ellen does uh, these pram color covers. For I know, they're amazing. And uh, she's very busy with that. And I'll put some pictures up of Ellen's pram covers. And we asked her if she wanted us to mention about how you can do that. But she's so busy and she's got so many orders as it is. And uh, she said, no, it's okay. She's very shy. She don't want to be on camera. But we said we would show her uh, pram covers. They're just unbelievable. And she uses this. Uh, frame, frame, yeah. and she does all this stuff on the frame, and then she cuts out very tedious work. I know, but they turn out to They're be beautiful. lovely. And Absolutely, she is a wonderful knitter. Yes, wonderful knitter. And so uh, we visited the store in Salt Coats, the yarn store, of course. That was our. I think we even came off the plane with our suitcases and went to that yarn store. That's what I feel like happened. <laughs> That was our first stop there. Cute little yarn store. Uh, Colleen can talk a little bit about what they had in the store. Absolutely. So the yarn store is called the Wool Sack um, and it has a lot of different yarns. They have a little bit of sock yarn, a lot of DK yarn for making baby um, items. They had some chunky yarns. They had lots of patterns. So the patterns in Scotland were beautiful. Um, so lots of Sirdar patterns, like it just was amazing. I could have spent a day going through the books and trying to find something, but I really, really enjoyed that yarn store. And the yeah, people, people were, were lovely. People were wonderful in yeah. there and uh, very helpful. And yeah, absolutely. They all knew Ellen, so that yeah. was kind of neat. Yeah, exactly. Um, but while on that trip too, uh, Ellen and George's grandson, Aiden, who we love very much. Uh, absolutely. He, we went to see visit a castle called uh, Port and Cross Castle. Uh, he is the most amazing tour guide ever. Yes, he was <laughs> wonderful there too. He he made sure we were okay and I don't know how old Aiden was. I think it's about 11. I think so. A tall yeah. young man, but uh, wonderful, very polite, uh, really looked after us and I told think... Told us where to put our feet flight so, footing, we so we wouldn't yeah. fall yeah. and we would climbed up and yeah. um, we just enjoyed spending our time with, uh, with Aiden. He was wonderful. So... Um, so we went to there and we also went to Robbie Burns' Cottage in Air mm -hmm. and Brigadoon and that's where he wrote uh, 
I'm not sure, but he wrote poems, of course, as you know. Right. Uh, but he wrote the poem about Tam O'Shanter. Yes. And some of that took place in Brigadoon, some right. of that poem. So we were actually on the Brigadoon, and the, the day again was the, the weather was yeah, absolutely was phenomenal, as you have seen from the photos we put in, just so that you exactly. can see. Exactly. And it was interesting that George had never been. Yes, and it was just down the road from Saltboats. <laughs> uh, but he was going to take Aiden there, and I'm hoping they had a great day when he took them right. another weekend. Uh, you know, we had dinner with family. You got to meet uh, some of my mom's cousins yeah. and their spouses and their Everybody children. Everybody was so gracious. It was uh, lovely. They were absolutely great uh, hosts, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just wonderful to see everybody, and uh, it was just a great little trip to, to Saltcoats. Absolutely. And I got to see the house where you lived as a kid. Yeah, that was And that's neat, neat for me. Like was, I, yeah. You talked about it a lot, talked about playing in the square, and... And um, yeah, you yeah, and um, cul de sac. <laughs> it was kind of funny. We took my mom along, and my mom said it was a cul de sac, and I don't remember ever calling it a cul de sac. We called it the square. And sure enough, when you get in there, it is a square. So we're not sure who's right and who's wrong on that. <laughs> but uh, it was just it was just great to do there, and we got a lot of souvenirs. And yes, so we'd we like did. to just talk a little bit about our souvenirs from Saul Coats. Right. So let's first of all talk about the wool sack. Um, the first day we went in, I picked up some yarn. Uh, this is 75% cotton, 25% uh, viscose. And this is to make May a cowl, because I thought she should have a cowl from the place where she was born. So this is Sirdar Amalfi. It's called Double Knit. And I'm just going to hold that up. So it's white, but it's got a little bit of a sky blue, a little bit of a navy in it. It is beautiful. I love the feel of it. It's going to be a nice cowl. I think so. Nice right. and bright for yeah. you. And I thought that idea was nice that we did that. Yeah, so that was that. And then we picked up this yarn, which is Stylecraft Eskimo Double Knitting. And it does look all as fuzzy as it is. And what Ellen had done with this is she put um, like a uh, I have a photo edging. I'll put up. She has oh, a little red sweater that yes. she used the red with this. Mm -hmm. And I'll put a photo in now to yep. show you what Ellen did with her sweater. Yes. With that. And so it makes it look like there's little fur cuffs on the baby yeah, sweater. It was cute. so cute and I thought, oh my gosh, I just need to have a little bit and then we'll try and do that. So maybe that's another progress project, yes. project I need to do. That's good. And so that was the first day we were there. And then I thought, oh, I want to have a wee something um, to remember uh, salt coats as well. So uh, we went back and I found this by Rico Design. It's called Creative Sport Print DK. And it is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, and oh my goodness, it's purple. There mm -hmm. it is. And I've got two 50 gram skeins, so I'm going to come up with something nice that is for a tonal pattern. I may put some texture in it, but this is so soft. You're going to feel that. Mm. That's very nice. Wow. Yeah. Now, That's can really you buy soft. that type of thing here? Um, I've not ever seen that here, so I don't know, to be honest with you. Wow. It's nice. beautiful. I'm thrilled with that. Now, the next thing that I'm showing you, technically we didn't get in Scotland, but Ellen had this pom-pom maker that she thought was the best pom-pom maker ever. And so I thought, let me take a look. And so I ordered one from Amazon. And it is called the Pom-Pom Set, and it's 624153. And so that's what it looks like. And what happens is they come, I'm just going to open it a little bit. It's going to be a little noisy. I apologize. So, I'll let you do that. So you wind the yarn around one and the other. How do you do that? <laughs> and then they're going to click in together. And then what happens is you take the yarn and wrap around and you end up with pom-pom. So I am thrilled. Ellen says it's the best. And so I'll let you know. I'm going to try and make a hat and put some pom-pom on it. And that will be good. So that was the wool sack. And the uh, um, pom-pom maker is from Amazon. So if you want to go and get this yarn, you have to go all the way to Salt Coats. <laughs> I'm not sure there's any, it's a very small little community. I don't maybe. think there's any hotels or anything. There may be, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. hotels. We stayed with family, of course, but, exactly. but uh, there, great uh, trip. Uh, now, when we went to see Robbie Burns Cottage and Brigadoon, I thought I need to have something. I'm, I'm a very much an emotional, like, let's find something that I can remember it in. And I love to make project bags. I have lots of projects and project bags. And so what I wanted to do was get some tea towels. So I found these two. This was at Robbie Burns? Yes, it was. It was in the gift shop. There you go. And so I think one of these, if not both of them, 
It was two for eight pounds, I think, so it was a good deal. There would be uh, salt coats right around this area here. So this is all of Scotland. Salt coats is here. Isle of Arran is here. And uh, Oban is up a little further north there. Yep. So, yeah, it was quite the little uh, tour, wasn't it? It was. It was. Lovely. We had a great time. So that is the souvenirs that we got um, from Salt Coats and from Robbie Burns Cottage. And now we're going to talk about our adventure to open. And we, I'll put some photos in. So again, you can see a visual of what we're talking about. Lovely little place. It was beautiful. Right? Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about that when uh, the video comes back. We hope you enjoyed all those visuals. <laughs> uh, gives you an idea what the weather was like and the scenic, uh, the nice scenery and all that stuff. It was mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. um, our first stop in Oban, of course, was uh, fish and chips. Fish and chips. It's called the <laughs> Oban Fish and Chip Shop. There was quite a few little fish and chip shops, yeah. but that one in particular just caught our eye and we went in there and oh. It was well worth the trip. It was. You and you I know. both said, do we want to split an order? Do we want to have one? We decided we wanted different batters, so we each had our own. Yes. And we ate it all, so it was good. <laughs> and we took our suitcases and we headed up. We walked up uh, because, again, the weather was so wonderful. We headed up with our suitcases just walking. We headed up to a little uh, guest house called the Strathaven Guest House. Lovely, very clean. They took such good care of us. Uh, yes, yeah. they were really good. nice people, and, and uh, you're right, they took care of us. The one night... Um, we had some, I had a, I don't know what it was called, we liked cider, and, and I had a bottle of cider that needed an opener, and we had to kind of interrupt them for an opener. <laughs> I tried to use my thumb, and I cut my thumb. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do. And uh, anyway, they were nice enough to give us an opener. I should have gone that the first round. <laughs> That's right. Catch and you know thumb. what was really nice about that? So we sat, and they had um, a place where you could sit and look out over the the little port right. of, of Oban, and it was beautiful. The weather was great. And you'll it was see so pictures pretty. of that. Was, uh, so pretty. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was just a really relaxing time there. Um, what else did we do? We we walked down the town, which was lovely. Yeah. We did a lot of walking, and um, mm -hmm. we went to a little store there along there. It's called the Pokey Hat, and they have lots of candies and chocolate. And what did we buy in there? Did we buy? We something? had an ice cream cone. It was Scottish oh, tablet yes. ice cream. <laughs> I was a little kid. Yeah. I had such a big smile on my face. It was so good. We did share it. We were good after our fish and chips. But oh my goodness. Yeah, Scotland really ended up being all about the food, really. <laughs> <laughs> we came back about if you notice, we came back a little uh, little extra weight. I should right. speak for myself. A little extra weight on there because fish and chips, you know, ice cream. But uh, and it was well worth it. Million dollar shortbread. Oh, million dollar shortbread. And then we'll talk a little bit about that because when we went to the Isle of Arran, that is when we had our first experience with millionaire shortbread. Yeah. Now, uh, open, the little yarn store there was uh, down by the boat area, down yeah. in the area. It's called, it's called the Wool and Needle Craft Center. And so there's their card. And I just want to mention that I found out about this store by watching the We So and So podcast. I love her. So Kaz, hello, how are you? Oh, hi Kaz. <laughs> I get to see you too, Colin, say, oh, look what Kaz is doing. Look at Kaz. And exactly. Kaz is from Oban, or north of Oban, correct? Yes, she is a little more north. And she goes into Oban, and oftentimes she will buy some sock yarn. So when I went to see the Wool and Needle Craft Center, I was looking for some sock yarn. Um, and we had a blast in that store. Oh. So we first walked in, there's a lady there, um, she's about our age, I, mm -hmm. I would think, and her name, uh, and Margaret Thompson, and there's another young lady there, a uh, sales clerk, and her name was Allison Donna. And Margaret was such a lovely, uh, both of them were lovely, yes. but Margaret was talking about her story, and she had a cast, she was supposed to be wearing a cast on her hand because she had fallen. 
Um, but she told us some, some really cool stories in regards to that. Um, she was a great storyteller, and if I yeah. try to tell you stories, it's not going to go <laughs> the same way. But I do want to share this one with you. What happened was, um, Margaret was down by the sea walking, uh, I don't know if she has a dog, but she was walking, and the fellow in front of her had a couple of whippets, and the whippets came running back towards her and kind of wrapped around her, and she tripped and fell, and she hurt her wrist. And so she needed the brace on her wrist. And doing that, the next day she got up and she was kind of feeling around to see, you know, am I okay? And in doing so, she found a lump on her breast. Um, and then that uh, made her go and, and seek medical um, attention yeah. towards that. And she's going through that whole journey now. And I know on August 8th was a big uh, day for her in the hospital. Um, she talked a little bit about that, and we hope her all the, the best, and we hope that that worked out really well for her. Um, and we wish you all the best in your recovery. Uh, but lovely lady, lovely stories. Um, the, the young lady was lovely too. And meanwhile, while we were there, another lady came in, and her name is Joy Cameron. And she is a retired primary teacher. And the banter back and forth it was very it was so funny, funny and just enjoying the enjoying the conversation. And Joy, um, actually, she knits socks um, and she sells them in a, an adjacent store, store and called, it's called Made in Argyle. Yeah, and the socks are beautiful. Oh yeah, and unisocks, socks, and you'll see, you'll have seen some pictures on that also. Now Joy had another story. There was all kinds of stories. We spent the whole day in there, I think. <laughs> and Joy had a really cool story. What happened was she had wanted to meet her daughter for lunch one day and her daughter had cancelled and so Joy was down by herself and I think she'd had the lunch or and gave the lunch to a, a lady that was homeless or right and so the lady said um, you know that she was just praying praying and praying for a little joy today and, and this person comes along and and uh, of course Joy says to her do you know what my name is and she said no my name is Joy so Aww. she said she had it's not just amazing. That's, yeah. I mean, like I say, she told the story way better than I do. <laughs> but it was just a heartwarming story that that, that happens That's in life. Right. So yeah. great, wonderful day there. Great experience. Love Oban. Um, exactly. I just, I could live there, I think. I know. Me too. Like it was beautiful. It nice was little beautiful. Fish, fishing village and exactly. little stores. And yeah, Is there anything else we, we missed about Oban that we No, I about? think, though, um, I can just talk about souvenirs if you okay, want Okay, yeah, sure. All right. So, as I mentioned, Kaz often goes to get her sock yarn at the Woolen Needle Craft Centre. So, I started there. And um, we can get opal here, but I wanted to get some officially from Scotland. So, this is, you can see the cute little panda bear. Oh my goodness, everything's in German, so I'm not even going to try, but so cute. And I was hoping to get another couple of colors, but they were, they had limited supply at that point in time. So and I grabbed also this. we yep. had the limit, we were in suitcases, by the yes, way. So we, we were. you know, we could have brought home a lot of souvenirs from, from a lot of places, but That's we right. were limited. Exactly. So I'm really looking forward to knitting this up and seeing how these yeah. lovely opal socks come across. Yeah, that'll be great. Exactly. So that was that. Well, and in the Woolen Needle Craft Center, they also have fabric. So I found two different bits of fabric. Once again, probably going to be project bags. So the first one will not be a surprise. <laughs> it is a plaid or a tartan of sort. That's great. It is. So I'm looking forward to making a project bag with that. And then I will think of Oban and Joy and Margaret and Alice and Donna, and that will be fun. The other fabric that I bought actually May found and said you need to get some of this. So it is just lovely Scottish thistles and of course it has a little bit of purple in it which makes me very happy. And it's surprising everywhere we went we saw some beautiful thistles and got some great photographs of exactly. those. Exactly. Uh, more than one place there. Exactly. Anyway. So I did well in the, we the wool and needle craft center. Thrilled about that. And then on our way back up to our um, hotel that we were staying guest in, house. the guest house, okay. um, we went into quickly in a store. Things were starting to shut down as far as close for the evening and I went, oh, there's soap, I have to get some. So this is called Purdy's of Argyle. This is lavender handmade organic soap. And I thought, I want to tuck that in my suitcase. So my suitcase is going to smell nice. What do you mm. think? Oh yeah, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. So it's all wrapped up nicely, but you still get the scent through. So I'm excited about that. So we had a great, great time. Day. And we Oban. only spent one day in Oban. I wish yeah. we had a lot longer yeah. to do to spend there. But we're only talking a short period of time in these places. Exactly. We were able to cover a lot of ground yeah. with walking 
and mm -hmm. talking yeah. and visiting yarn stores and uh, yeah. you know but one day was wasn't enough beautiful I know. community I know the one thing I would really have liked to do is take like a boat charter because they have one that take you to go see different oh. birds and seals and that kind of thing right. I think if we'd had more time I would have loved to do that and I would love to have next time maybe we could just do a photography trip I would oh, love to next yes. time just take my larger camera I think you'd and, have, and get great. some great photos there because uh, the scenery and the place was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so, so thank you, Oban, and thank you for all <laughs> the people that were there. And uh, our next uh, stop is off to the Isle of Arran. I'll be putting pictures up of the Isle of Arran, and then when we come back, we'll have a chat about that. enjoyed those photographs uh, it really doesn't do it justice you really have to be there there is just an energy of the Isle of Arran it was beautiful I would love to live there actually oh it was, it was so calming there's just something about it it's just wonderful and it's where I used to go as a child we used to go there and uh, as our holidays and go camping and that type of thing so it had a lot of great memories for me oh that's great it was now, great to see I love seeing your memories because you talk about it all the time and it's really right. nice to see yeah. And the day that we went there, we went with my mother, my dad's cousin, my dad's cousin's uh, daughter and her grandchildren. And um, it was just wonderful. And we had lunch with them at the end of the day, but, uh, and they took the ferry back with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the family still go there. Like my dad's cousin's daughter has a trailer there that they took us to, which was mm -hmm. really cool, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And it was, Great scenery, as you can see from the photos, but they, again, they don't do it justice. You take the ferry to Erin from Adrossen, and it's only about a 45-minute ferry, and it's a really nice little ferry. We had something to eat. It's always about the food again. <laughs> again, Just a wee snack. Just a wee snack. <laughs> yeah, the weather was, um, uh, and my, my second cousin, Donna, who's wonderful, she was so positive and happy, and she took us in her car, and she took the car in the ferry, and uh, she took, drove us all around uh, the island. Uh, she showed us the Sleeping Warrior. Yeah, and you've amazing. seen that in one of the photos. And it actually looks like a Sleeping Warrior when you look at it. Uh, really we went to La Cranza Castle, uh, which you is... You said you used to play around there as a kid. To, yeah, we used to play there on the swing. There was a swing set in front of it when I was there. Mm -hmm. And also, my great-grandmother raised 10 children in the Isle of Arran. And there's her ruins of where she lived are still there, and the whole family still goes to visit those ruins. Yeah. And it seems to be a place of solitude for the family to go yeah, to. Like yeah. if somebody passes away, we, uh, they tend, like I know Donna will take flowers to that site and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool there to be with some family, and uh, you know it was really neat to be with my dad's cousin because I remember as a child uh, she would help me across that little creek, <laughs> and. I was able to help her across that creek this time. So um, what goes around comes around. <laughs> and those actually, that little creek there, um, these are where I got those rocks from. So that's why they're dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's too bad I kind of ruined it with uh, <laughs> the glue. Good gorilla glue. But I'll have to go back to Scotland and get some more of those. But I'm not throwing these ones out. Okay. Um, what else can we say about the, the Isle of Arran? It was a great day. The weather was wonderful. There was the uh, distillery. Yep, we went to the distillery. And we had a cup of tea in the distillery. We, you'd think we would have had whiskey, but it was still <laughs> early in the day. We had tea, and this is where Colleen and I discovered millionaire shortbread. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so uh, I did get a recipe from somebody gave me a recipe. Yep. What it is is shortbread covered with caramel and then chocolate on top. It is heavenly. Ah, everywhere we went. <laughs> ah, and we would go all over Scotland after that. Yeah. And even in Dublin, in Ireland, 
they had Millionaire Shortbread. Exactly. It's our new favorite thing to have. Exactly. And I'm <laughs> hoping to try and make some. So For Christmas presents, I think, would I think be a great that would be idea. a great idea. And we went to the Isle of Air and Colleen had done some research. I don't know if he had done research or we just knew there was a Woolies of Air. Yep, we just saw it. We were driving by, so Donna was driving us around and we'd seen Woolies. I went, oh, May, we'll have to go back there. We'll grab yeah. some yarn. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, make sure we get to that yarn store because that's our whole adventure to go here. <laughs> we go to Woolies. This is funny. It was a bakery. It's a bakery. <laughs> so W O L W O O L E Y S and Woolies. And it's the last name of the people who own the bakery. <laughs> so we had a good chuckle. We did have a good chuckle. To make it even worse, it appears there actually is across from where Woolies is, a little further down, there is actually a store we could have got some yarn in. Oh. And we didn't know any no, of that until till... just about when we were getting ready to leave. Right. Leave so, Scotland. Like right. not, not leave, leave the Baron. Yeah. Exactly. So. I, you know, it was really cool. That is funny, isn't it? <laughs> that, that was funny. Um, it was really cool to see the sheep all around there and walking it around was. with the sheep. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, again, it was only one day that we got to spend, but we got to do a lot of uh, work yeah. there. In uh, June, my dad's cousin's daughter, June, is very wonderful too, and her two kids were extremely her grandkids, grandkids were, there. were funny. And then we got to meet my my dad's other cousin, who actually lives in the Isle of Arran, yeah. uh, John, and he's a lovely man. And the whole day was just it was beautiful, beautiful, and being around with great people and family was we couldn't ask for. Couldn't ask for, for me anyway. I don't know. It was a better. You. No, it was a fantastic day. And I was really fortunate to be able to see that and see you with your family. It, right. You just got the whole sense of what it used to be when you were a kid and went with your grandma yeah, to Yeah, it was good. So that. maybe someday we can go back and spend more of a day and more, maybe a couple of weeks just exactly. on the Isle of Erin. Exactly. And Donna recommended a book to me that is written about um, that area and mm -hmm. Isle of Erin. And I'm just in the middle of it. I'm just. Right. I'm a couple chapters in and it's... Oh, Are you liking it? I'm really I'm liking it. I think I would like you to read it. Okay. I think you, Because what's happening is they're mentioning all things. All the places. All the places, so it's really right. neat. I would highly recommend anybody going to Scotland, you have to go visit the Isle of Especially if you're, if you're a cyclist, you're a hiker, yeah. they hike up the... Tori Nyon, there's eagles, great place for photo shoots. Exactly. Uh, it's you amazing. know, There's nothing I can say against the Isle of Erin. It's That's just... Right. Uh, it was great. Dear to my heart and I love it. Good. Now, so as we mentioned, there are no wool souvenirs, but there are other souvenirs. So once again, I'm in the middle of trying to find, there's a lovely tea towel. I love the bright colors. It's got the name Scotland along the bottom. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to, there's a picture of what that tea towel will look like. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, I'm hoping to do something like that, either to make a tote bag or a project bag, something like that. It's beautiful. I love the colors. The other thing that I've been, that I was working on, because I'm trying to think, what can I buy that's little that fits in a suitcase? And I found some key rings. And what the key rings do, they come with a lot. So I don't think you could ever use them as key rings because holy smoke, I've listened to that. <laughs> so, but what these are are cute little sheep with the Scottish flag on them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those charms off there and then I'm going to make progress keepers oh, great because idea. I think that will work. So in this one there's a thing that says Scotland and there's four wee sheep and on this key ring, same thing from the Isle of Arran, there is a heather, a, pardon me, a Scottish thistle, a bagpipe that's in tartan and then another Scottish flag. So that's going to make another one. So all kinds of wee things. We bought a lovely fridge magnet can't wait to put this on the fridge. Which will be lovely. So it actually says Air in Scotland and it's pretty. And then the one place that Donna took us was to a wee tea room. And it was, what did we have? We had a uh, bun and... Oh, yes. We yes. had a potato scone and an egg on a roll. I had that. And I'm not sure what you I had. I think I had bacon and egg on a roll. Oh. <laughs> Okay, it's all about the food. <laughs> it really wasn't, but it was about the food oh, that day. Oh, I can taste that now. I I've tried to make a potato scone since I got home, but it just hasn't happened. I may have to go to the British store yeah. here in London, Ontario, yeah, exactly. to find some potato scones because, uh, you know, and a Scottish roll. It, yes. it all has to be held the whole package. <laughs> exactly. It so was wonderful. We too. went there, and then beside that tea room was a place that's called Erin Aromatics. And so they make soap and candles and bath stuff and oh my goodness the smell and 
So I bought two bars of soap, which will not surprise anybody. This is honey and oatmeal. So I bought a big one, and I think what I'm going to do, just because smell that. That's one bar. I think there's a, I think there's three bars of soap in that. I don't know. Oh, so I think what I'm beautiful. going to do is figure out a way to chop little bits off mm. and then put them in little bags and put them in my project bags. Because that one, actually even coming into the room where this soap has been, it smells beautiful. Oh, yeah. So that's that one. And this is called lavender and tea tree. Same idea. It's a, it's a little smaller than that. But I have to tell you, when these get used up, I think I would order some online. Because it is the nicest you smelling soap. You can order soap. online? I can think order we could. can. I could. I Either that or I'm going to talk to Donna and say, Donna. Send us some. <laughs> send us some. We'll, we'll pay you the shipping. <laughs> Help us out. Um, so that soap is brilliant. It smells so good. I've had it in with some of my yarn and it now smells just as beautiful as that. Mm. We had an amazing time on this first set of our adventures. Podcast. So, yeah, podcast. podcast. So we've got Oban and we have saw coats and we have yeah, the Isle of Aaron yeah. and what an amazing adventure. So we hope that you've enjoyed it um, as we've talked our way through. We kind of did our souvenirs a little different because we, we wanted you to see exactly what we got in each place. Um, so I'm hoping you enjoyed that. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying what we're doing. Um, we're having a great time doing yeah. it and the adventures are so much fun. And if you have any questions about our trip or is there something that we should have covered that we didn't cover, please uh, comment or uh, ask your questions. Uh, we'll answer your questions as best we can. We're looking forward to our next adventure which will take us to Glasgow, Scotland. So until next time, you take care.